If you saw the title of this video and thought, man, that is just 100% clickbait, well, <laughs> you're probably right. But it's also true. Hello out there, and today we are taking a look at a very special knife from Benchmade because not only is this a limited edition that is long since out of production, but the model itself, the 707, is a discontinued model as well. So any knife of this design is going to be uh, maybe a hard one to come by, a harder one to come by at this point at least. And what we have here is the 707-701, a 500-piece limited edition that goes all the way back to 2009. And I've got to thank my buddy Machete J for letting me uh, check this one out. This is his piece, and I've had it for a while now. And, you know, whenever I get a knife like this that's a little bit older, um, you know, and, and isn't readily available and isn't something that is, you know, hot and new on the marketplace, I, I sort of struggle with what angle to take about making a video about it. Or if I'm even going to make a video at all, because, you know, what's the point in reviewing a knife that is going to be very difficult for people to find, right? Um with this with this one though i think the more that i really thought about it and the more that i considered this knife the more that i realized how special it was in like the history of benchmade models just because i really don't think that there is a better gent piece that they have ever put out at least not for my tastes and so today we're just going to go through that we're going to talk about why this sort of fits all of my preferences perfectly and the things about this knife that I really like, and the things that aren't in this knife that I really like the absence of, if all that makes sense. All right, and, and that's it. And maybe at the end of the day, you'll have learned about a Benchmade model that you didn't know existed. Maybe for a few of you, this one will get uh, added to a grail list. And I couldn't support that any more than I do because uh, it's a great model. And if you were trying to hunt one down, it would definitely be worth that endeavor. I'll tell you that much. All right, but let's just talk about the model. Let's go through some of the details of it and some of the things that I really like. All right, starting with the materials. So the materials for gents pieces, I think are a really like a hot button talking point. A lot of people, when it comes to gents carries, they like embellishments and they like a lot of, um, I don't know, like not accessories, but they, they like, you know, some of the um, accent pieces to be really overdone. And, and you know, that's where you just have flares, let's say. that That's a good word, flares in your gents pieces because, you know, they are oftentimes um, more about uh, the look than, than almost anything else, right? But for me, that, that really doesn't matter. And if you've, you know, watched my videos and seen my collection, even the gold class Benchmade that I have, it isn't a gaudy kind of piece. It isn't overdone and over embellished. And, and I just really don't care for stuff like that. So when it comes to materials and when it comes to looks, you know, I'm not looking for anything that's too crazy. I'm not looking for like a C-Tech inlay or some crazy like marbled carbon fiber, even though that can look really good. I don't need that. And I don't need a damn steel blade. I, I like just a simple, classy looking thing. And this model as a whole, the 707, the, even the original one with like the black coated aluminum scales and the G10 inlay, that's a very refined piece. And this one just takes that to the next level. You know, this limited edition with like this polished aluminum here and um, in the carbon fiber inlay, it just takes it to the next level. And it's sure, maybe it's simple and maybe I'm just a little bit too simple of a person. But for me, it just really resonates. It just really, really does everything that I need a piece to do when it comes to the look of it. One other thing, since we're talking about the carbon fiber, you know, um, when we're talking about the carbon fiber, uh, this could have just been a very simple flat inlay, you know, just boop, make it flush, and that's the end of it. But instead, there's a curvature to it, which is very welcome. This model um, might have gotten a few, <laughs> a few negative, like, kinds of criticisms just for not being the most ergonomic model, just because it's sort of small, and depending on your hand size, it can be a little bit cramped, right? But the curvature of that, that contouring and the carbon fiber, it feels really good. It does help, like getting your fingers on it right here really does help with the grip of it. And then furthermore, on the other side here, underneath the pocket clip, just that um, that curvature does give it the ability to slide in and out of the pocket and not be, to, not be so loose. So uh, that is a nice thing. 
All right. Um, going from looks, which we'll sort of go back and forth to, but going from looks to, to materials, for me, I don't have to have the fanciest carbon fiber scale. I, like I said, I mean, all that stuff from a looks perspective, it doesn't always appeal to me. From a function and just like material perspective, you know, S30V blade seal for me is perfect. It's fine. So I know there's going to be plenty of people who look at a gents piece and they, and they want their nicest, like highest end kind of steels to be in that. And that makes sense, you know, and if, if you're paying for the, the handle <laughs> to be as like decked out, as a lot of times they are, you're probably going to want a more like designer kind of steel too. And that makes perfect sense for me. And that's why with this knife, S30V is like, it's reasonable. It, it makes sense, right? Because we haven't gone too far uh, above and beyond with the, with the handle. So S30V is sort of a perfect steel for it and it works. So while, you know, a lot of people might look for M390, stuff like that, and hey, I'm never going to say no to M390, um, <laughs> uh, S30V is just fine, works exactly for what I'm looking for. Now, ultimately though, the reason why this knife, more than any other, fits that Benchmade, um, that Benchmade perfection of gent carry is that it's still a focused knife on structure and usability. You know, when we do a couple of comparisons and we take a look at another knife that I was thinking about in this, the 770, and this is an old model as well. You know, you take a look at this small version of, a, of an Osborne and what the 707 has that the 770 doesn't is just a lot of just interior structure. So we've got these full liners all the way across, you know, and even though they are milled, I mean, they provide a lot of strength. You don't really have that on a smaller knife like this. And while, you know, for, for a number of people, you know, this knife would be perfect for gents carry. And honestly, I, I don't think that it would be an issue. What I like, what I really like about a gents piece is a knife that has the look of something that is ultra classy and, and has that certain look, but then when it needs to get used, it performs. And that's what I've always liked about the sequel, and, and that's what is great about this knife, is that it is as strong and durable um, as you could ever ask for, but it sort of is in disguise as just a pretty piece. You know, and, and while, again, I don't have any qualms with the performance of a knife like the 770 or anything smaller, I mean, just looking at the structure of these two knives, I mean, you can get an understanding of, of what's going to be just a little bit more durable than the other. So, yeah, overall, this one, it's not going to be everybody's favorite gents carry. It's not going to be everybody's favorite knife. But I think for me, it's a perfect combination of so many of the traits that I want to see in a knife just coming together into one. And what I didn't do earlier, and I'll do just to, to close it out, is show you a couple size comparisons. Here is the Chris Reeve uh, in, in Kosi that I have, uh, the small in Kosi. And you can see it's very comparable. You know, very comparable to the Inkosi in overall size. So it does fit like a lot of gent kind of um, dimensions, sure. And I think there's a lot of people, even if you took away <laughs> all the snail trails, there's a lot of people who might look at these two knives and think that the, the sequel is the more attractive of the two. You know, just, uh, just maybe not really knowing like the value of the Chris Reeve or just preference, you know. And when we look at the weight, even though we have those full liners... You know, the aluminum scales give it a little bit of lightness that keep it below three ounces, 2.65. So sure, not the lightest gents piece that you're going to have, but it is still lighter than the Chris Reeve. And no, it's not as light as a bug out. And it's definitely not as light as the, uh, as the 770. But again, it sort of goes right down the middle and just really fits the bill in regards to all of the things that I would like it to be. Now, if this were my knife, would I try to find like maybe a uh, a little like satin bug out clip? Yeah, I think I'd probably do that, you know, and just make it deep carry. But otherwise, I mean, this knife is is pretty sweet.
and pretty spot on. I've got to thank my buddy Machete J for letting me check it out. He sent a number of knives and, and again, I, I might just throw them all in a video and just let you guys see them because I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what types of videos to make about them because they're like out of production, hard to find, that sort of thing. But, um, but yeah, they are some really cool pieces and this is probably of the ones that he sent me, the cream of the crop. And like I said, a very worthwhile uh, chase if you were going to try to hunt one of these down. All right, guys. So that's why I think that this is the best gent carry knife that Benchmade has ever put out. Let me know in the comments down below. What's yours? Which one do you think is up there? I mean, there are a couple really good ones, even ones that I've had from the past few years that um, that would be right up there as well and are in the conversation. So let's have that conversation. Let me know your thoughts. And any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know about that as well, guys. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care and I will talk with you soon.